There comes a time in every man's life when he reaches a crossroads. A chance to choose between two paths. One is familiar, grooved with well-known materials and established habits, keeping one's dignity and subscriber base. The other one is working with epoxy. Today we'll be making this oak tray with an epoxy inlay. I know epoxy has really been overdone, but trust me, this will not be your waterfall, living edge, blue sparkle river table. This will be somewhat classy. If you're new here, I have a whole playlist about the build process of this 3D printed CNC, but back to topic. With the tool height setter, I only need to find the waist belt height once and from there only measure the offset. We start out with a pocket tool path to clear out the inside, then a 3D adaptive for an inside rounded corner and then a simple contour tool path to cut out the workpiece. With the coarse 3D adaptive tool path in the inside corner, the ball nose bit has less material to clear. On the chamfer tool path, the chamfer tip offset was too big and so it cut deeper than it should. To fix this, I repeated the roundover tool path with a 1mm offset. Epoxy? In self defense, I have to say, this wasn't a planned epoxy inlay. See, I'm the kind of person who buys birthday presents at the same day or at best the day before. And out of nowhere, my best friend suddenly had birthday. The initial plan was to make him this tray with his streamer name as Mahagoni Wood Inlay, but due to some setbacks, a closing time frame, and limited inlay experience, I opted for the easy way out and did an epoxy inlay.
I homed the CNC before shutting it down and noted the position and then let the epoxy cure overnight. The epoxy did flow into the roundover, so to avoid hand sanding I will rerun the roundover toolpath. Since I saved the coordinates at the home position yesterday, I can simply home the machine, put in the saved coordinates and continue wherever left, assuming the limit switches are somewhat accurate. Since I am running out of time, I really don't want to mess this up, so I am double and triple checking if the real world position matches the coordinate system. Then you just send your prayers to the CNC gods and press start. To be extra sure, I am rechecking the height, which should be around 8.5 mm. I left the tray half a millimeter oversized, so I could trim off the excess epoxy and the top wood layer. This way you don't need to worry about discoloration where the epoxy seeps into the wood. I don't know about you, but this was probably the first time where I found this oscillating tool somewhat useful. 